A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone! So as you can tell, I am going to be doing a little draw with me for today's video. I initially was planning to do a moving vlog for this Sunday, but I decided to smash both moving vlogs together into one big vlog because I felt like the first one would be pretty boring because the first one would just be me at home packing. So that moving vlog will come next week, but I just have a little draw with me for you guys today. I'm going to be drawing my interpretation of the tarot card, the Ace of Swords, and I just had this idea to do, you know, the classic hand holding the sword, but with some like flowers growing around it. So here I am doing that. I am using the brush that I call Funky Pen. It's a trick that I learned from Studio Meggy. So basically she just added jitter to a uh, monoline, but honestly you can do it to any brush. If you add jitter to any brush, it will just make the brush nice and fuzzy. So it just adds like a little bit of interest so it isn't like a plain uh, straight line and I like the little fuzziness of the jitter. I am just outlining my sketch. I do take inspiration from real life objects. So for this, I took inspiration from a dagger a real dagger that existed and then you'll see later on that I take reference from like renaissance flowers and stuff. I just find that it helps make your drawings come alive a little bit more and give them a little bit more character and it's also easier than you know coming up with it completely from your head but yeah right now I am just sketching that out.
so now that I have finished my line art, because for this piece I decided to do line art, I felt like it would look nice, I am ready to fill in the colors. So I normally will use monoline to fill in, unless I'm wanting to have like a lot of texture then I will use 6B to color it in, but normally now I will just use monoline and outline the shape and then just color drop it in so it's much faster. So now I am starting with the details and I always use a clipping mask for details over the blocked out colors. It just makes it much easier and faster. So basically clipping mask just, you know, controls where you're coloring so you don't go outside of the layer that you clipped your mask onto. Um, and I think you can tell from how it's going so far, but I was going for a much warmer color palette. I didn't want to use any purple in this piece i definitely wanted something very warm very earthy and like spring
So I've gotten most of the colors down, so now I'm wanting to add some texture, and I always like to do uh, hands with a little bit of like redness at the end. So here I'm trying to find a nice red color that I want to use for this skin tone. And I like adding that in normally with the noise brush. The noise brush is one of my favorite uh, texture brushes. I think it has like a really nice gradient as well. And then here I'm adding like some little dashes into this flower. I've been really liking taking the color that I used for something and then kind of shifting it a little bit, maybe making it a little bit more bright or saturated and then adding like little dashes or dots to where that color is. I think it adds like a little bit of variety to it. Here you can see me adding like a dotted pattern. This one is the Honey Eater brush and it comes with Procreate and I really like it because it's kind of crunchy, like the dots are a little bit fuzzy and I like the way that it flows. So here I'm adding like kind of shading, like shadowing with this nice super saturated blue color and I like uh, making it a multiply layer. I like how that nice blue color multiplies on top of the colors underneath it. And I am just adding that wherever I feel like the piece needs some pizzazz, some interest going on. It's very quick here, so maybe you don't catch it, but uh, lately I've been really liking using the soft airbrush or the, I think it's the medium airbrush, and clipping onto the line art layer and just adding like different colors to the line art and then lowering the opacity just to add like some variety, some interest, like everything that I've said. Um, but yeah, I've been really liking doing that, especially using like red and blue.
And then these are just like the very final details of the sword and the flowers. And I'm so sorry my huge head keeps getting into the way of the camera. Um, I actually had packed up my little arm that I used to film from above, but then I had to unpack it and set it up again. So I don't think that I set it up quite right so that it doesn't get my head. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, yeah, here I'm just catching any errors and finishing up the details. Obviously because it's a card, I'm adding those card elements like the white border and where the name of the card is going to go. I decided to go for a super simple background. You'll see in a second that I just did like a hand-drawn grid pattern because I felt like the sword already had a lot going on. I didn't think that it needed much going on in the background, but I also just did like random hand lettering to make it look a little bit more sketchy uh, for what the tarot card is actually called. We are reaching the end of the piece. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I like doing these as little updates for new things I've discovered and how I kind of illustrate now digitally. Um, I'm still exploring and I've kind of accepted that I'm pretty much a chameleon when it comes to my identity as an artist and honestly I'm still growing and trying out a lot of new things especially digitally. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week. Hello, you can see me in the background, that's so scary. Just really quickly wanted to talk about today's sponsor before closing out today's video and today's sponsor is Squarespace. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's an all-in-one platform where you can create your very own website it is where I run my website and my business. I have always ran my business on Squarespace. They have some really great tools like the design tool, which is great for beginners, or if you know how to code, it lets you do that as well. It also has super great detailed web analytics. So if you're needing to see how your website is doing, it will show you that there. And of course I use their commerce tool, which is really amazing. You can hook it up to any other platforms that you need to use for your business. And it really helps you keep organized with all of your orders. So yeah, whenever you're ready to get your free trial at Squarespace, you can go to squarespace.com and use my code for 10% off your first purchase.